everybody, I'm Jeff Teague with Fred Anderson Toyota in Raleigh, and this is Adam Newton. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Great. To... Um, can you tell people your background with Toyota? Uh, yeah, I've been a uh, Toyota technician now for over uh, 12 years. I've uh, been a mechanic for about 24, and we're going to be talking about hybrid versus 12 volt batteries today. Okay, fantastic. Difference. That's great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch between being here and filming so that we really get down and dirty and learn the differences between this one. And this one. This is the latest edition of Toyota Car Care Talk where we answer your questions about repair, service, and maintenance. So Adam, we've got two pieces of equipment here. Absolutely. What can you tell us? What are we looking at? So we've got the 12 volt battery that you're gonna see in most of our cars. This is just gonna be a base example of a 12 volt battery. Uh, these are gonna be the ones that actually start the systems. And here we have what they call the traction battery. This is your hybrid battery, the big dangerous monster that's under the, the trunk, or they like to say dangerous, but um, this it is the one that's very, gonna- Yeah, it looks very clean on the outside. Absolutely, they are usually spotlessly dry. Um, they do their job with a whole lot, with a, a very little muss and fuss. Yeah. Um, this is the and one right here. What kind is this one right here? Uh, this is a nickel metal hydride. This is going to be the one that's going to be in the 2011 Camry. And Adam, you were saying this 2011 Camry needs a new hybrid battery. Yes, what sir. was wrong with it? Uh, it throws a DTC telling us that one of the battery packs isn't quite up to snuff. Um, there's 34 individual cells inside the battery and it monitors them all pretty much individually. So when one of the blocks goes down, it'll throw a DTC and it causes time for replacement. Okay. And what's a DTC? Diagnostic trouble code. Ah, perfect. So you knew exactly what was going on here and we got a new battery. What can you tell us about some of these parts that we see, the cords, the cables? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, these two orange cables here lead to the safety disconnect switch or the SDS as we call it. Uh, it's a breakout switch here that we remove so that it makes the system inert or at least as close as possible so that we can safely service this vehicle. Okay, great. And then what about the black cables right over here? On the uh, side? Yeah, these are going to go to your control units. They're going to give information about the status of the battery to the hybrid ECU and to the car's control systems. Okay, and then how about these orange cables? Uh, these are the drive cables. These right here are going to be the ones that are actually doing the majority of the work, and they're the ones that are heavily shielded here. Adam, in a normal combustion engine, we're used to seeing the 12 volt battery mm -hmm. in the front of the vehicle. Yes, sir. How is that going to be different when you see a hybrid, and how could that vary between the Toyota hybrids, let's say, right. or so, any manufacturer hybrid. Um, not every hybrid we have has the battery in the trunk, but most of the hybrids are putting the 12 volt battery inside the vehicle. So it won't look exactly like this one. We're going to have what's called an AGM or absorbed glass mat battery. Uh, we use those inside the car with a little vent tube so that they don't off gas within the interior and cause a risk of fire or explosion. And the hybrid battery, where could you find that in things like Sienna, Camry, Prius, Tundra, Sequoia? Uh, yeah, most of them are going to be under the back seat or near the center mass of vehicle, near the rear axle. Uh, the Sienna is a little bit different because they mount that a little bit farther forward. You'll notice vents under the driver and passenger seats. Those are to cool that big traction battery under the front seats. You know what, and I heard about the cooling vents is you're supposed to keep them on road trips, uh, free from blankets, yeah. pillows, stuffed animals, things like that. Pet hair. Pet hair is the number one killer of hybrid batteries because it invades the fan. Uh, if it gets past the filter, it can be a big problem. So that's part of why we maintain that filter and replace it on interval. Oh, that's interesting. And I know in things like a Camry and a Prius hybrid, they have that underneath the floorboard so that it really doesn't take up a lot of storage space. Right. Right. So you don't lose a lot of cargo ability, I guess you could That's say. That's a fact, yeah. We actually have a benefit over our plug-in hybrids in that area because the plug-in hybrid has to have extra architecture in the trunk in order to have the charging system. So you lose a little bit of cargo space, which the hybrids don't have that issue. Okay, that's real interesting. I noticed we've got a pair of gloves today. Mm -hmm. um, why do we need gloves? Well, nobody has thus yet been killed by opening up one of our Toyota batteries because of our safety protocols and the systems built into it, but it is set forth that we're supposed to handle these with the gloves, so I don't intend to be the first today. Now, Adam, you talked about needing one cell replaced out of this whole giant fixture right here. Mm -hmm. How do you make the determination if you just need one cell replaced or the whole battery pack itself? It seems like it might be a difficult dilemma. Right. Um, for, the, for the interest of our guests, we only recommend replacing the entire hybrid unit. Because they are batteries, batteries have a limited lifespan. Uh, if you go in and replace one, you still have the rest of them at the same kind of age limit. And we don't feel like it's as, as effective of a repair for the guests. Um, I've had on my personal cars hybrid batteries fail, and I've gone in and replaced one or more of the cartridges myself, and eventually I found myself going back under the cover. And, you know, that would be a definite pain point for our guests, so we don't want to offer for that as an option for sure. Yeah, I guess that'd be a, uh, a new house. You put in 
light bulbs all exactly. over the house at the same exact time, and we've all been frustrated by this. Right. Well, what happens if you replace one cell and then three months later, cell 23 goes out? Right, but I can actually show you, if you want, under the cover, how we make the determination of which cell is the bad one. Yes. All right, so let's take the cover yeah, off and absolutely. see what we can do so here. So we're gonna get gloved up here and we'll describe what we have going on. I love the red gloves. Oh, they are the fashion statement for That's sure. That's a great look. Oh, I think I saw that at Fashion Week, Adam. Definitely. So whenever we would take our own batteries apart for our own personal use and make the determination on which one of them was bad, these are the bus bars that connect all the batteries together. They're laid in here opposite. They're positive and negative, positive and negative. So when we were doing this on our own cars, we found that we'd have to break these cells down into their individual elements to measure them. So we would remove what are called the bus bars here, and they will connect all of our little individual packs together. They're laid in kind of like the batteries in any of your toys that you see, where one end is positive and one end is negative as they go through. Okay. So we would remove these plastic covers that you see along the sides and expose the terminals for each one of the little batteries. And once they're all separate so that they're not in series together any longer, we will take our voltmeter and do a positive and negative test on each one of the cells individually. Normally we're looking for above 7 volts on each one of the little cartridges by themselves. Because 34 times 7.2 gives us the 244 volt output of this unit. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So how are these labeled? Are they labeled like cell number one or how would you even say that? Or well, does it not when have they're the assembled, uh, we only see that it is expressible as battery blocks on the data list that we see. Uh -huh. So when we come through to do repairs on our own personal cars, and again, this isn't something I would recommend for our guest, we would go through and number the cells ourselves with a Sharpie marker and write the value of each one of our measurements on the cells as we go through the block and find which one would be bad. Typically, you would find one somewhere in the center that would have around a six volt rating. That indicates a depressed cell and we would break the stack open, pull that out and put a new one in and replace it. Well, that's interesting. And then how many cells are on each side? Is it, is it one row on the outside, one row mm -hmm. there? What about in the center? Uh, these are actually all individual. This is one, this is another one, this is one, this is another, and they're laid reverse of one another, just like the batteries in your toys at home. I just learned something new. This all the way across is one cell. I thought it was one, two, three, four, five, six, but no, it's all the way across. That would be one individual cell. I noticed a few things here. In addition to the cells, it reminds me of a, a bomb expert. Don't cut the green wire. Oh, so we've definitely. got a green wire and then we've got these tubes right here. Right. What are those for? Uh, the tubes actually are little breather tubes because each one of these has a little vent on it. So these are going to be breathers for all the batteries and they connect like so on top of them. And the green wire here is going to actually be our temperature measurement. This is how it keeps an idea of how many, uh, what the temperature value of the battery is so that we can control that blower motor when we need to. Oh wow, that's really interesting. It looks so different on the inside than you see on the outside. It's such a clean case, like a, reminds me a deal or no deal case. Like. Right, you expect it, you know, you see sometimes when you pop your hood, you'll see your batteries kind of dirty on the underside of your car. These don't get that way. They stay nice, clean, and dry. This was a 2011 Camry, so mm -hmm. doing the math, I'm, I'm getting good at my math. That's about 12 years. Sure is. 12, 13 years, right in that range, depending on when you actually bought it. Mm -hmm. You might have bought a 2011 and 2010. Mm -hmm. but. How long might a hybrid battery last? And I know there's no one tried and true answer because right. every situation is different, but I've heard stories about cab drivers who have 400, 500,000 miles on their Prius yeah. in New York City. Right, absolutely. Um, this one, you know, most of our batteries, we expect a minimum of 10 year lifespan. But honestly, we are seeing a lot of our cars go the operational lifespan of the vehicle. We're seeing hybrids with two, three, four hundred thousand miles on them on a regular basis that are operated daily and they just don't stop. We yeah. just don't see them. And I think in our previous video when we talked about the cost of a hybrid battery replacement, you were just kind of given generalities mm -hmm. of what one could possibly cost. You were saying that our dealership sees about 5,000 customers in service every month and you only got a small number every month, right. like maybe even one, is that right. what you're saying? Uh, one would actually be a good stretch. Um, this really? battery, I had to wait for some time for us to be able to shoot this video because we just don't have a lot of these in our stock room back there. We have them on stock for when guests may need them, but we're just not replacing them that regularly. Um, I would say that th you know these things can run in the range of 5K. It depends on the model that you're replacing. But again, for the mileage that you're seeing, you're just not gonna be replacing these things that often. Yeah, and some of them don't even cost 5000 right? Right, they, be... they can be a good bit less depending on the model for sure. Toyota recently came out with a new hybrid battery um, that is 10 years, 150,000 miles, is mm -hmm. that right? 
That's it. Okay, so that should give new owners peace of mind, but what kind of things would that cover? Would it, it couldn't possibly cover this, could it? Yes, sir, it does. The entire HV pack is covered in that. The inverter assembly, the wires, the control units, everything is wrapped up in that warranty. And again, hybrid customers of ours aren't coming in to have a lot of hybrid replacements done under any circumstances. You know, we're very few, we're seeing very few of these en masse for sure. All right, now on one thing I did want to cover here is sometimes our failure points isn't the bad battery itself. Occasionally some of these bus bars can have a failure on them if there's a high moisture content. We sometimes get a little bit of corrosion around some of these terminals here and that can impede the ability to keep the battery properly charged and we seem to have to that replacement have a when we have a hybrid failure that ten, tends to be a player in the factor. Oh that's really interesting. Boy how hard is it? I know you can't do it right now because it's a brand new one but how difficult is it to get out uh, one individual cell if you find this is the one that doesn't hold the charge? Um, the ones that I've done for my own personal use, again, for a customer, we're going to pull the entire unit fully put together by Toyota. We're not going to have our hands into it except to replace the end components on it. Absolutely. Um, to get the control, uh, to get the cells out individually, you would have to remove each individual bus bar. Uh -huh. You'd have to remove the two... Uh, Retain, I call these retainer bars. Yeah. They allow the entire thing to kind of open up. And each one of these cells has an eight millimeter screw in the bottom of each side of it, kind of staggered down the bottom. So the base plate will have mounting bolts for them as well. Um, it does get to be a little tricky to get them out because once you remove them, they tend to spread and open up kind of like a clamshell. And you have to kind of strap them back together to get them to fit back into place. That's another reason why we don't do this here in the store. See, that would be a labor-intensive job, I would imagine, for sure. And right, right. And we want, the, we want these things put together in a clean room for our guests. We want it to be as reliable as possible. If, in the unforeseen circumstance, you do have to have a hybrid battery replaced, it's going to be once. Okay. And then another question. This is nickel metal hydride. Mm -hmm. um, what if this was lithium ion? What might this look like in appearance? Would it be uh, a different size? Yeah, a little bit flatter, a little smaller, probably a bit lighter, a uh, little bit denser architecture on it. Um, I haven't personally had one apart myself, but I have seen them in training. And when you are taking one of these out, when you're removing it, what would be the process for taking out the old one and putting in the new one? Absolutely. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the 12 volt battery and disconnect both positive and negative. I'm going to remove the safety disconnect switch and hang it on top of the antenna on top of the car so it is completely out of the area of operations. I'm going to wait about 10 minutes and then I'm going to go test and get a final reading at the inverter to make sure the system's capacitors are completely, completely, completely drained because it can give you a nasty pinch if you don't. Adam, thanks for showing us the ropes of a hybrid battery. Glad this was help. really educational because I didn't know all, you know, I knew there was a lot involved, but I truly had never seen under the, the cover a full battery pack. That's very cool. Right. Hopefully nobody actually has to leave that to us. You know, we yeah. would rather train professionals get under the cover. And again, if you do have to touch one of these things, remember safety, <laughs> safety, safety. We don't want to be the first. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, thanks guys so much for watching and uh, please follow Toyota Car Care Talk on the Fred Anderson Toyota YouTube channel. Just hit subscribe and follow Toyota Car Care Talk. Adam, if anybody has any questions or, I guess, repair, service, or maintenance questions, they can leave them down there in the comments. Love it. Bring it on. All right, great. And we'll do a video about it. So thanks, guys, so much. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Have a good one.